Hello and welcome to the political rumble where we look at the big top political story in this election season and dissect it from various angles. Tonight we'll be focusing on Arvind Kejriwal who finds himself in the eye of a gathering storm after becoming the first sitting chief minister to be now in enforcement directorate custody. We'll have all the details on that big story but as always first it's time for the headlines. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal sent to six-day ED custody. The Delhi Chief Minister is remanded until March 28th in the Liquor Gate Pro. Aap and other India Alliance parties join hands, approach election commission against Kejriwal's arrest, claim opposition deliberately being targeted ahead of the polls, call for a level playing field. BJP says Kejriwal, the mastermind of the liquor scam. In another setback for the Congress, Delhi High Court dismisses the party's plea against income tax reassessment proceedings. The Congress claims that their accounts have still been frozen. No BJP Biju Janta Dal Alliance in Odisha. After all, BJP ends all speculation. State party chief says it will fight solo now on 21 Lok Sabha seats. Two opposition chief ministers arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. Main opposition party claims bank accounts frozen by income tax. This is not freezing of the Congress party's bank, bank accounts. This is the freezing of Indian democracy. That is what is happening here. Election commissioners are appointed by government majority. More than 50% electoral bonds go to one party. Is there a level playing field in 2024? Let's bring you the big breaking news. Arvind Kejriwal has just spoken a short while ago to India today. Soon after, he was uh, put in ED custody till the 28th of March. Speaking to our correspondent, Kejriwal has said, we'll run the government from jail if I have to. That's the significant breaking news. Kejriwal saying, I wasn't expecting my arrest. Kejriwal says, not scared. I'm ready to take on anything. Kejriwal, under ho gaya, bar. Sarkar Vahi Se Chalegi. So Kejriwal apparently determined to stay on as Delhi Chief Minister as of now. Nalini Sharma, my colleague, joins me with that big story. Nalini, that's the big story that's coming in at the moment. Can you give us more details? You spoke to Mr. Kejriwal. Is he saying that he's going to continue as Chief Minister even though he's in ED custody till the 28th of March? Well, absolutely, Rajdeep. We had a long conversation with Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. There was almost a three and a half hour time period before which we were waiting for the order to be pronounced during which we were speaking to Arvind Kejriwal and he has definitely confirmed that at least as of now he has no plans of stepping down as the Chief Minister of the National Capital. He has said in very clear words that we are in or the government will go and he has followed that up when we asked him what kind of a message does that send to the public as well as the political parties. He said that this is what the janta of the National Capital, the janta of Delhi wants. We've asked the people and this is what they want and we will give them what they want and he will continue to run the government. We've also asked them how he plans on playing that out. He said there will definitely be difficulties. He said, dikkate to bohot hongi aisa karne mein, but they are going to try their best to make sure that all of it goes as smoothly as possible. There, are... there is of course, uh, there is of course the moral question. Is, yeah. There is, of course, the moral question, uh, Nalini, and I want to bring that to you here, Preeti Chaudhary, my colleague joining me. Preeti, Arvind Kejriwal may be defined in saying the government will be run from uh, jail if, he, if and when he's put in judicial custody, but the LG is watching, the Delhi Janta will watch, the BJP is clearly watching, elections are here. Do you believe he will go ahead with this? Is this bravado for now, or is this plan A 
And if it doesn't work, is there a plan B in place? Rajdeep, this plan A, B and C. You know, if you look at it, Arvind Kejriwal, what, it hasn't really happened, uh, you know, that Arvind Kejriwal has decided that he's going to run the government from jail today. Um, the writing was on the wall that Arvind Kejriwal is going into jail. There were multiple discussions. It was a full plan by the Ahmadmi Party where they decided that A, the only way they'd be able to keep the party unit together where Delhi is concerned. It's a year and a half before Delhi goes into election and to, you know, pull forth at least on the four seats of uh, the Lok Sabha seats that the Ahmadmi Party is fighting, Arvind Kejriwal would need at least optics-wise to run the government from jail. And there is no plan B in it. He's very clear. Uh, the party is very clear. If the LG tomorrow comes out and wakes up that this is a constitutional crisis and uh, recommends president's rule, they are even willing to go down that line. They'd rather have president's rule and take you know, go to court with it, then change the sitting chief minister who's Arvind Kejriwal right now. What, what, what's the reasoning behind it? Is it because there are no options that the party has or limited options that the party has or because Mr. Kejriwal believes that that's the way that he will get some kind of sympathy if, for example, the LG decides to dismiss his government? You know, uh, it cuts both ways, Rajdeep, yes. Uh, a sympathy wave possible if uh, it is generated with Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. Because look at it, Rajdeep, you know, history stands testimony. Every time Arvind Kejriwal has looked to the voters for sympathy, he's got it. Uh, you know, 2014, you'd remember, the Aam Aadmi Party, when it fought the Lok Sabha, was completely demolished. You know, most of their party persons lost their deposits in that election. It came back in Delhi to sweep Delhi. So in that sense, there's, but it didn't have the taint of corruption at that point of time. So yes, it's a perceptional battle, but logistics-wise, Rajdeep, Deep. Cent power has always been centralized where the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned. The working of the Aam Aadmi Party always runs around Arvind Kejriwal. It's impossible to, at least perception-wise, to for the Kader, for the MLAs, to think of a political outfit where Arvind Kejriwal is not at the helm of it. Okay. Preeti Chaudhary, Nalini Sharma, appreciate both of you joining me here on the news today. Hello and welcome. This edition of the political rumble in a week that has been momentous, a week when we've seen a sitting chief minister being placed under enforcement directorate custody, a week when in the declaration of the Lok Sabha elections, the opposition finds itself increasingly encircled. The Congress party claiming that its bank accounts were frozen by the income tax department, questions being raised over the way election commissioners are being appointed, all of which is raising questions over whether the opposition at the moment is really getting a level playing field in 2024 or is the BJP ramming ahead with its juggernaut with the support, some say, of central agencies. Today we will discuss on the political rumble just how the arrest of a chief minister is going to play out on the election battlefield. Before that, take a look at the rumble special report. Arvind Kejriwal puts up a brave front after his arrest by the ED in the Delhi liquor policy case. The arrest of Kejriwal in less than a week after the declaration of Lok Sabha elections has left the Aam Aadmi Party rudderless. In the absence of a proper second level leadership, India's most successful political startup in the last decade faces an uncertain future. Aaj Aam Aadmi Party ke number one, number two, number three, number four, number five ke saare netaon ko jhoote aaropon par Bharatiya Janta Party Shasit Kendra Sarkar और उनके पॉलिटिकल हथियार इन्फोर्समेंट डायरेक्टरेट ने गिरफ्तार कर लिया। Even as Aam Aadmi Party finds itself in a battle for survival, the opposition has rallied behind the Delhi CM. A delegation of India Bloc that included the Congress, TMC, CPM, Aam Aadmi Party, NCP, DMK, and Samajwadi Party went to the Election Commission. Protesting against Kejriwal's arrest. विपक्ष के हर रंग की पार्टी यहाँ पर उपस्थित है और मैं समझता हूँ सब 
एकजुट होकर इस मामले में गए हैं कि पिछहत्तर वर्ष में कभी भी चुनाव के बिल्कुल शुरू में चुनाव के आसपास एजेंसीज का दुरुपयोग ऐसे कभी नहीं हुआ पिछहत्तर वर्ष में पहली बार एक पदासीन मुख्यमंत्री को कल रात को गिरफ्तार किया गया पहली बार ऑन थर्सडे बेरली आवर्स आफ्टर द डेली सी एम अरेस्ट कांग्रेस लीडर्स many of whom had been at the receiving end of kejriwal's attacks had reached his residence to show solidarity is baat ko hum condemn karte hain iski hum ghor ninda karte hain agencies ka is tarike se modi sarkar ka durupyog karna apne mein sarasar galat hai gair loktantrik hai the bjp has come out strongly against kejriwal rejecting charges of vendetta politics He is not above law. He has to answer all the queries of the probe agencies. Where he is he did not cooperate with the uh, probe agencies. Now he is being arrested. If Arvind K. Jewal remains out of action for long, Aam Aadmi Party and indeed the India Bloc will suffer a big jolt as the Delhi CM is among their best voices in the Hindi heartland. While the BJP sees no wrong in the crackdown on Kejriwal, does the arrest less than a month before the general elections deprive the opposition of a level playing field? Bureau report India today. So let's raise the big questions on the political rumble. Is 2024's battlefield a level playing field or not? Will Arvind Kejriwal's arrest unify the opposition? Is the Modi government now going for the opposition's jugular ahead of the 2024 elections? Does the ED remain an X factor at election time? Joining us on the Rumble, Supriya Shrinath, the Congress's national spokesperson and head of social media, Shehzad Poonawala, the BJP's national spokesperson, Priyanka Kakkar, Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson, Amitabh Tiwari, political analyst, joining me. Appreciate all of you joining us here on the Rumble today. Let's go one by one. to each and every one of you i want to start with you mr shehzad punawala you've been hearing what arvind kejriwal has said he's saying a he's not resigning b he believes this is vindictive and the entire opposition has come around to back him on this question claiming that this entire operation that has been done according to the opposition is part of vindictive politics using the enforcement directorate and pmla powers your response As far as the vindictive question is concerned, is Mr. Kejriwal implying that the honourable judge right now, the Supreme Court which denied bail to Mr. Manish Sisodia, the High Court which denied bail to Sanjay Singh, and the other courts which denied bail to your friend Vijay Nair for over last one year, are all vindictive? And the fact is that the Congress Party itself started this investigation. Here is the Congress complaint. There is also a report of Mr. Pawan Kheda saying that the entire liquor scam has only taken place because the Congress started the probe. And yours truly on the panel, Mr. Supriya, Mr. Supriya Shrinath was one of the most vocal voices talking about the corruption of Mr. Kejriwal. I don't want to embarrass her by playing her clip. I'm sure that you also remember. I saw your show two, three days ago where my colleague Ajay Alok was there, and you were trying to expose the double speak of TDP and BJP. TDP was saying all sorts of things about the prime minister i thought today your show's preface would have had what congress used to say it's mr. coming Marker, it's coming shehzad hold mr. your horses uh, mr punawala hold your horses don't worry it's Rajdi, coming please, please don't focus on the question me. no focus Rajdi, on the question do not Rajdi, tell me how to run the show mr punawala do not focus on the question please Rajdeep before having level playing field elsewhere you start having level playing field in your show where you allow the BJP to complete and where you also have BJP and the opposition panelists in similar sankhya but anyways you also want to play the role of not a an anchor but sometimes defend in support of congress party that's your choice okay anyways, your mr punawala my new rule is if you make personal jab you stop sorry i will now turn to the next you you do not wish to have answer my question you i don't expect any jibes. better from you you made a personal jab i don't expect any better from okay, you because good. you don't have let's the courage to listen to the truth okay let's you go don't on. have the courage mr. to listen to the put, truth put his fader down priyanka kakkar you respond to what you are hearing first you tell us a chief minister mr uh, ms priyanka kakkar who is now in ed custody is insisting i will continue as chief minister i will not resign 
What's the message you're sending out? Someone who said that he was an anti-corruption activist crusader now in a corruption case has been arrested, denied bail as of now, and says, I will not resign as chief minister. What's the message you're sending out, Ms. Kakar? Good evening to everyone, Rajdeep Ji. The message is very clear. We are not going to buckle down under pressure from the BJP. The BJP in 2018, as you very well know, made, uh, uh, made certain am amendments to the PMLA Act, which revived the unconstitutional provision, uh, which was previously declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, Section 45. It revived this unconstitutional provision. Therefore, mm -hmm. getting a bail in a PMLA Act under the PMLA laws is next to impossible now unless you are somebody like Ajit Pawar or Chagat Mujbal or recently Sarath Reddy who turns an approver who gave rupees 45 lakh uh, 45 crore in electoral bonds to the BJP and subsequently gets a regular bail in this very case when he was called the mastermind before and he gets a regular bail on the basis of a back pain and the ED does not oppose. The ED did not oppose to a back no, pain. No, I'll come to the chronology of Mr. Reddy also. I asked, no, no, ma'am, ma'am, just a minute. I will you... come to the chronology of Mr. Reddy, but I asked you a question, which again you need to answer. The perception of a chief minister who's in ED custody and says, I will not resign, I will run the government in Nasi from jail. What's the message? I think uh, the message, I was on a previous show of India today uh, earlier and there was a sea water survey conducted by you and the message is very clear in that sea water survey that the people realize that this witch hunt against the Aam Admi Party is only to stop Arvind Kejriwal ji and Arvind Kejriwal ji has made it clear that nothing will stop him. The BJP cannot stop him, that's the message that he's given. Now. Uh, coming back to the case, Rajdeep ji, because your viewers should know that this entire case is based on mere hearsay. After two years of hounding us, keeping our top leaders behind bars, the ED has not been able to recover a single penny, no proceeds of crime, which is the singular most important component in a PMLA case. Now, then I'll go back to the amendments and you know why it is becoming difficult unless the ED goes and submits to the court that they lost the file or they don't have an objection if there's a back pain in case of Sarath Reddy. So those are different things. Now also, what is most important is uh, the people today do see that people like uh, Sanjay Saroj who are accused of terror funding, no less, by, have joined the BJP yesterday. They joined the BJP yesterday. He was accused of uh, uh, terror funding in India on instructions of Pakistan and he joins the BJP, that is acceptable to the BJP. But we are behind bars where no recovery has been made, made against us, where the investigation is ongoing and we are behind bars. So people can see through what is happening. Ma'am, the fact is that you, you still haven't answered my central question whether a chief minister can run a government from jail, but I'll ke keep coming back to that in a moment. I want to know. Of course, he can. Okay, no, you legally. believe he can. No, okay. No, 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 you you don't. No, no, you up. don't see any legally problem with the can. perception of it. No, you no, don't no, see that it sends out the wrong signal. No, you... not none at all. None at all. Okay. None at all. Okay. None let, at all. Okay. Let me turn to you, Supriya Shinet, because Shahzad Punawala started this debate saying that why don't you ask the Congress what has been their stand in the past on the Delhi liquor scam? What Mr. Punawala did not know is that my producer had already got those sound bites out. We have made no distinction between the double standards practiced by the BJP and the Congress. And that's what the Punawalas of let the world speak. don't like because if they go on channels speak, which I are one-sided. Please keep quiet, Mr. Punawala. Today I will be rude to you like you are to me in the past. Either you listen to me and run, let me run the show the way I want. Ms. Well, Supriya Shinet, Ms. Supriya Shinet, I will play now what Ajay Markan said. And Mr. Markan was the original complainant in the Delhi liquor policy case. Listen to what he said, and I want to then understand the Congress's stand on this issue. Please listen to him. Kejriwal ne Congress ko harane ke liye, Congress ko nuksan pahunchane ke liye, Kejriwal ne 100 crore ka scam kiya hai, aur inko koi netik adhikar Kejriwal aur inke mantriyon ko jo jin jin ka naam isme hai, chahe wo Manish Sisodia, chahe Satyendra Jain ko, inko koi netik adhikar nahi hai ki apni kursi pe ek second bhi aur reh jaye. इसके अंदर प्रूफ आ गया है जब मनी ट्रेल एस्टैब्लिश हो गई 
और पीएमएलए के कोर्ट ने थर्सडे को संज्ञान लेकर के चार्जशीट को फाइल करने के लिए ईडी को कह दिया है तो उसके बाद में क्या नैतिक अधिकार केजरीवाल को है कि वो एक सेकंड भी अपनी पोस्ट पर रह जाए तो आज कांग्रेस पार्टी इनसे पूछना चाहती विदाउट सुप्रिया शिनेट रिस्पॉन्ड दिस वॉज अजय माकन अ फ्यू मंथ्स गो then there was absolutely no problem that you had in kejriwal being arrested now you are going to the election commission saying this is vindictive action please explain your change in stand ma'am thank you very much and i hope i will not be interrupted i am very glad that you have paid that sound bite because i wouldn't expect anything less of a esteemed channel and a veteran anchor editor like you i'm glad you have played that out in politics and in life timing is very important mm -hmm. first of all yes we are the original complainants in that liquor scam and i also want to put on record that bjp with its seven mps in delhi eight mlas in the assembly and many many councillors in delhi kept sleeping throughout the time when the liquor scam was happening they did zilch today they can come and cry from the rooftops mm -hmm. a lot is about timing if indeed the bjp wanted to punish and really act on the liquor scam they could have done this a long time back why did they have to wait till we reached the threshold of elections to act against a sitting chief minister mm. why this spectacle why why are people being put behind bars as we are moving closer to elections our bank accounts could have been frozen four years back why are they being frozen now I think these are very important questions, and I want to just no, say no. But you are changing the goalposts with due regard. You are not I want to understand. To fight, no, no, but you are you're not answering my question about changing the goalposts of Mr. Kejriwal. I am not for a moment changing the goalpost of Mr. Kejriwal. The problem with the BJP is. you act on a complaint you do a fair probe the timing will be questioned rajdeep and I, that is exactly what i am trying to tell you with an with a, with a very small example you and i get into an argument you go and file a complaint against me a day before i'm stepping out to vote the police come and bar me and i cannot vote a lot will be questioned on the legality and the propriety of what this government does mm -hmm. why did they have to do this at the eve of an election we are less than 4 weeks away from an election mm -hmm. and if i may you know it's very fashionable for some bjp spokespersons to come and spew venom here uh, against the congress spokespersons against aap against anybody who opposes them or asks them a question i will seek 16 seconds of your time because this very spokesperson had some very lavish things to say about the prime minister while he was in the opposition some things that are very uncharitable some things that even i one of the harshest critics of mr modi has no, never said ma'am ma'am ma ma why are we going into the past no sorry ma'am uh, what chezad punawala said about I prime minister modi and not give me a chance to speak just a minute this i will let you respond the only way rajdeep can do this debate okay the only way rajdeep can do okay. debate is by silencing me out i have not silenced you mr punawala to go anywhere mr punawala that said speak Okay, this is Sup the only way you can do this. Debate, okay, Rasi. Supriya Shine, this shows your integrity and I your don't character. Think, don't teach me integrity lesson, Mr. Punawala. Supriya Shine, I am okay. Uh, put uh, Supriya down now. I put her me, voice though. down. I am going to ask you uh, on the subject itself. Do not change the debate. I will ask you specific questions. Each of you should reply to them. Have the courtesy to do so. You are spokespersons of national parties. Shahzad Punawala, to you. I will put your chronology to you, ma'am. to mr punawala now the liquor gate linked to electoral bonds november 10 2022 mr punawala aurobindo farmer director sarat reddy is arrested november 15 2022 aurobindo farmer buys 5 crore electoral bonds november 2021 20, 2022 bjp encashes those bonds 26 april 2023 sarat reddy states to ed he agreed to pay part of 100 crore turns approver May 2023, Sarath said Reddy gets bail. ED doesn't oppose it. June 2023, when he turned approver. November 2023, Aurobindo Pharma pays 25 crores more. The question is, Mr. Punawala, do you want to tell me that all that has happened over the last 18 months, the BJP has conveniently got an approver according to the Aam Aadmi Party? He has paid your electoral bonds, and you've turned against Mr. Kejriwal. Uh, you got him to turn against Mr. Kejriwal. Your response, sir. If I answer this question in the first 15 seconds, will you let me complete the remaining part of my answer without Absolutely. the constant interruptions? Absolutely. Yes or no? Absolutely. 
You promise that? You won't break your promise? Let's start. Mr. Let's Poonam. let the audience hold your word to it. Yeah, okay. Do you think the your person you named, Mr. P. Sarachandra Reddy, first of all, he is one but not the only component on which this case rests. There is C. Arvind, there is Magunta Reddy, there are a host of other documents and statements. But having said that, since you quoted this person, this person may have been spoken of as being made an approver. It is ultimately the High Court that approves an approver or denies an approver. Are you suggesting that the High Court, after going through everything it had on record, made approver of somebody that the BJP wanted to strike a deal with? And by the way, that company, which is a public sector company, has given electoral bonds and advertisements to many agencies and firms, including those to con close to Congress. Now let me make the point I want to make as you've promised and I hope you will have the patience to listen. The reason Rajdeep, I have always had great regard for you and I continue to have it. But the reason I got upset with you at the beginning of the show is simply this. You said your producers have already kept the bites of Congress's hypocrisy ready. Did your producers tell you, which Ms. Supriya Shinet also quoted, that the bank accounts were not damn frozen, that they were on a lean? And there's a difference between a lean and a freeze. And today the High Court in its 40-page order, 45-page order, has upheld the IT assessment and has in fact said that the assessment should be of 520 crores and that mega enterprises, by the way, lo and behold, has given unaccounted money to Congress party. Have you read this order, Rajdeep Sardesai? Let me also tell you, you said the election commissions are being appointed by a majority. Did your producer put the fact that there was an approach to the Supreme Court to stay that particular election commissioner's law, but there was no stay granted by the Supreme Court. So are you suggesting that the level playing field has been skewed by the Supreme Court, which refuses to entertain a PIL trying to halt the Election Commission uh, Appointment okay. Act? And by the way, Rajdeep, why don't you tell your viewers that in the state election commissions, who is doing the appointments? Are the Chief Justice of the High Court part of that? Or is it only the Chief Minister and the government that appoints the state election commissioners? What about the level playing field there, Rajdeep Sardesai? Okay. And Rajdeep Sardesai, I won't expect you no. to tell no, Supriya you Shinet, 15 seconds just walk. Today, Don't interrupt me. Just today. Okay, if you are rude to today, me, you stop. Don't please interrupt stop him. Rajdeep. No, you will not be rude anymore. Your rudeness is over. You want to be rude on my show, you will not be, your voice will be switched off. Supriya Shinet respond, level playing field is what Shahzad Punawala says, where, how can the Congress claim that there is no level playing field? The IT attachments, which y'all went to the court today, he's right, the Delhi High Court has refused to grant y'all any relief. He's right there. Therefore, when y'all claim that your accounts have been frozen because this is a conspiracy, the court should have gone by your, uh, 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 by your, observations, your narrative, they have not gone by it. The fact is election commissioners, y'all went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court did not accept the view that the election commissioners have been pushed through in an illegal manner. When the opposition is saying no level playing field, you have to back that up with harder facts. Thanks very much. I think facts are for people of this country to see. You and I don't have to sit on a 9 p.m. debate and tell or convince people what's happening. You think people of this country can't make out that 95% of all ED cases are against opposition leaders? You think people of this country don't put two and two together that because Mr. Udhav Thakre and Mr. Sharad Pawar are standing up against Mr. Modi, their parties will be broken up and there will be de factions that will be created? You think people don't understand that an elected government in Bihar is going to be changed just before elections because they want to to create a rift in the, you know, try to create a rift in the India alliance. You think people in this country don't understand uh, that at the eve of elections, whether it's Rajasthan or Chhattisgarh, uh, ED was all over the place. You think people of this country don't understand that India's principal opposition is being denied its own for our funds. Lean is a technical thing. Let's not get carried away here. What does lean mean? That I cannot use the money in my bank account that I could have for publicity. I could have for ads. I could have for rallies. I could have for travel. I could have for various other things. That's what it simply means. Yeah, but you means. didn't get relief so from the court, ma'am. But you, you didn't get relief from the court. You, you argued before the I court that reassessment of tax proceedings should be, uh, should be re-looked at. The court did not buy your argument, ma'am. I am very glad you brought it up. I am extremely glad and thankful to you that you brought it up. When my leader was disqualified by a conspiracy hatched by the Modi government because he chose to show the mirror and talk about Adani and the Modi scam, his membership, he was disqualified by a lower court. The high court did not give us relief, but the highest court in the country, India's Supreme Court, not just gave us relief, it rejected that judgment and his 
uh, membership was restored. I have complete faith in the constitutional courts of this country. It, we may have not got relief from high court. I am most certain that we okay. will in the Supreme Court simply Can because I? a level playing field means that we have equal, one second, we have e equal access to funds, we have equal access to media, we have equal access to jurisprudence, and we have equal access to these country resources. The reality is that electoral bonds, and I will end with this, electoral bonds have laid threadbare the organized loot and the legalized plunder that the BJP was doing. In okay, you've made your point. The fact you, you, I have given you enough point, madam. I have given you racket. enough time the in the interest. Racket okay. that was running at the behest in of the, the level BJP playing field. Is your voice fader, Amitabh Fred Tiwari, Bear. is the is been listening patiently. He's not argued, not interrupted. Amitabh just Tiwari, before I come to you, I want to give you a list. Just a minute, Mr. Yeah. Punawala, I'll come back to you. Opposition leaders locked up. Arvind Kejriwal is the latest. AAP leader arrested by ED in Delhi liquor policy scam. Hemant Soren, JMM, arrested by ED in a land scam case. Mani Sisodia, AAP first arrested by CBI in February last year in Delhi liquor policy, arrested by ED in March 2023. Sanjay Singh, arrested by ED in Delhi liquor policy case last year. Satendra Jain, also arrested by ED in a money laundering case. K. Kavita, arrested last week, BRS leader in the Delhi uh, liquor policy case. Anubrato Mandal, TMC, arrested in cattle smuggling case. Partha Chatterjee, TMC, suspended, arrested in a teacher recruitment case. Jyoti Priya Malik, TMC, arrested in ED in a PDS scam. Manik Bhattacharya, TMC, arrested by ED in a primary teacher recruitment scam. Senthil Balaji, DMK, arrested by ED in cash for job scam. We can go on and on. Now, none of them have got a bail. Do you believe in perception terms, therefore, the opposition is on a weak wicket? Because unless they start getting bail or the Supreme Court says that these are illegal arrests, the Shahzad Punawalas will say, look, are you saying that the courts also don't give you a level playing field in this country? You see, see, Rajiv, what is happening is that this perception battle is, is being played in two courts. One is, of course, the judiciary and one is the public court. Mm -hmm. In judiciary, as you mentioned, since these leaders have not been able to get bail, mm -hmm. Somehow it seems that the arguments and the points which the spokespersons of these parties and the lawyers make are either not being accepted by the courts or the evidence which the ED has against these leaders is fairly strong. So that's one perception which is getting built up and that is being played by BJP. The other perception which the opposition is, is or the narrative which opposition is, is trying to build is that uh, the Modi-led government is trying to kill competition ahead of the Lok Sabha election so that they have a fair chance in the elections. But what happens is that this, when we talk about the level playing field, a lot of advantages which BJP has over the opposition today is irrespective of this level playing field. It is largely leader, leadership, uh, a vision, and a weekend organization of the opposition across India. So what is happening is that since ED has largely been targeting the leaders from the opposition and leaders who join BJP have got their cases somehow slowed down. It does raise a question whether the agency is, is playing uh, in a fair and... But does the voter really bother? Amitabh Tiwari, you do a lot of uh, uh, voter behavior. Does the voter really bother? The voter is probably saying, you know, if the courts don't give them relief, so be it. Yes, so, so what happens is that uh, corruption is generally works for an opposition party as an as an instrument because in, in 2014 you would remember BJP had used to the hilt that the 2G, CWG, GJG, etc. allegations. When you are in power, you have to show action to make corruption a big issue. Now, when we talk about action, the audience or the voter perhaps does not distinguish between the arrests and conviction. Mm -hmm. Though the conviction in political cases is low, arrest also is perceived as an action by the government. Right. And that's why, as you are saying, this, this is working perhaps to the favor of the Modi government because election after election, they are seeing winning. Uh, 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 so so it, comes down, it comes down, therefore, Priyanka Kakkar, you see, the AMRB party seems to want to get sympathy. They believe that Arvind Kejriwal will gain sympathy. Public out there will say, First, you win your battle in the court, then you seek sympathy. Then you'll get sympathy. First, you've got to win your battle in the court.
I don't know why do you say that, Rajdeep ji. I mean, we have really worked hard and uh, we've worked very hard in the past 10 years and really turned around the education system, the healthcare system, the women empowerment and other schemes that we've brought in Delhi and implementing the same in Punjab. I mean, uh, but you may also have taken kickbacks in the Delhi, Delhi liquor policy scheme. Ma'am, you may have done all that, but according to the ED, uh, the ED remand please application, you took kickbacks, the party took like kickbacks, they claim, for the Goa election of 2022. That's what the ED remand application says. Yes, but I think the voter is also intelligent. They can see when a Chagan Bujbal and a Ajit Pawar, who the Pradhan Mantri Modi accused of a 70,000 crore ka gotala, and they come to the BJP and they perceive clean, people can see through that. And Modi ji hasn't delivered on any of the promises that he made in 2014. You can pick any of them and see. Uh, so I do think that the voter today is much smarter. They can see through what is happening. They know how the laws have been amended consistently by okay. this government to suit their requirement. They know that uh, under PMLA I, I wonder laws, whether, it is extremely I wonder though, tough now you regard... to get a bail unless the ED. No, I, I take your point about PMLA getting bail being tough, but I wonder whether the voter in the 1970s, the voter you to come out on the street because he believed that Lok Tantra Khatre mein hai. Today the voter is more interested, some would say, in delivery of services. In 1970s? Ma'am, yes. that's the big difference. Today he wants delivery of services. If he point. gets the services, he, democratic mm -hmm. rights do not matter as much. Correct. But Shahzad Punawala, yes. the level playing field argument that Supriya Srinath mentioned comes also from perception. You cannot disagree on this show that the perception remains that if I'm an opposition leader in this country, there's a fair chance that the ED could come knocking on my door. That's the number of cases I've listed out. If I'm in government, I have complete protection and almost immunity. In this, in this remand application, ED says there were kickbacks for the Goa election campaign. We all know election campaigns work on cash. It's not as if the BJP doesn't get cash. As the electoral bond scheme shows, the BJP is the largest beneficiary, even in bonds and presumably in cash. So I ask you again, do you accept that this level playing field argument is a valid argument? If one party gets all the media power, all the money power, all the ED protection, where is the level playing field, Mr. Punawala? The only level playing field that has not maintained its sanctity is the one on your show mm -hmm. where you keep interrupting me and don't let me complete because you don't tolerate facts. And if you have the guts, give me the time to contradict each point. The Supreme Court, when it gives a verdict on electoral bonds and Chandigarh, you are dancing on top of the moon. When the same Supreme Court says ED and CBI is not being misused and 14 parties pol uh, political interest litigation is junk, at that time that Supreme Court verdict is not to be believed. You allowed this Priyanka Kakkar to say that PMLA law has been amended, that PMLA law has been upheld by the Supreme Court. And secondly, Mani Sisodia is in jail also in a CBI case under IPC and POCA. But Rajdeep Sardesai, a man who claims to be very true to the facts, why didn't you bring this out and counter Priyanka Kakkar at that moment? Why didn't you counter Priyanka Kakkar and say that if the Supreme Court still believes that the PMLA law is unjust and unfair, it can grant bail to anybody? You've studied law. You the may PMLA, not practice it. The you PMLA, PMLA law, law is under review, Mr. Punawala. Why didn't you say put this? His voice down again. Again. Mr. Punawala, you do not want the fact check. PMLA law is under review. It's under review, the judgment passed by Justice Khanvilkar. I know a little bit more of law than you do. I know you know, believe you know everything about everything. There are subjects you do not know as much as some others do. I will let you speak on the question. I asked you a question, answer it. Can I will I not interrupt you if you answer my can question, I, I promise you. Can I speak? Yes, please. Can I speak? Yes, of course can you can. Can I speak? Yes. You said, she said... She said that all the cases are under PMLA. Here is the High Court order in which the CBI court had gra not granted relief to Manish Sisodia and was upheld by the High Court and it was under IPC and POCA. You interrupted me to say that the PMLA amendment is under review. No, it is not. Only the question about whether it's a finance bill or not is under review. But you did not interrupt her not to true. tell her that they are under jail in IPC and POCA. This is your bias. Now do not interrupt me. Listen to me carefully. Once again, you shout Mr. at me. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anyone who shouts at me in this show doesn't get time. You want to talk like a decent Indian? You want to talk like a decent Indian? You can. You want to shout? You I will shut decent. you down. You Do you want to talk decent. like a decent Neither person? You fair. Put him you down are... again. You want to talk like a decent debater? I am happy to listen to as much from you. I am giving you 10 seconds. You decide you want to run this show by shouting at me. Or you want to run this show by giving your viewpoint. Go ahead, Shahzad Punawala. Tell me why it's not a level playing field. I want to... Yeah. 
or why it is a level playing field? Rajdeep, it's not a level playing field only because Rajdeep, now, only uh, the reason I'm trying to point this all out to you is to show that the only place where level playing field is actually damaged is when people with binocular views and hypocrisy at their disposal. She said Adani scam. Revan Reddy has invited Adani to invest in their state. If it is an Adani scam, why is she inviting Revan? Why is Revan Reddy inviting Adani? You did not even interrupt her once there. On a minor point, which you are wrong on, you interrupted me. This is not level playing field. And by the way, Rajdeep Sardesai, on the electoral bonds issue, if you have the courage, don't cut me off now. This spokesperson who was handing you out certificates said Yashoda Hospital, IFB, Megha, Future Gaming and Vedanta have given Chanda to BJP without proof. As it turns out today, Vedanta has given to Congress, Megha has given to Congress, Future Gaming has given to TMC, DMK and Congress, Yashoda which she got wrong and she said Yashoda Ghaziabad not Yashoda Hyderabad has given to Congress and IFB Agro has given to TMC. You did not even invite a TMC spokesperson today if you want to debate on electoral boards. We all my have debate, debate, my debate that. is on Arvind Kejriwal. out on the facts. Again, Ravine again. Bittu today Mr. has said that the action is perfectly fine. You you don't have the guts to show that, Rajdeep. That is your integrity. That is your integrity that you don't have the right. Shazad Punawala, uh, you are a rude. Shazad Punawala, I will say you this to you today. Me, you, you are. are them out on you track. have come on that this show. You have come on this show that with an agenda to be rude and obnoxious. I'm going to switch you off. You have do not have the decency to talk to people. I will not allow you anymore to talk at people. The same rules apply to all of you. Have the decency for our viewers. There's much more that our viewers can learn from than having people shouting at anchors. Mr. Punawala, I'll, I will tell you this. When you were in school, probably having a chiclet, I was doing this profession. So do not again ever tell me and shout at me. Because if you shout at me, you're welcome to leave the show. There will be no shouting anymore. Enough is enough. I've listened to you for years now. And you do not have the decency to talk to people with minimum decency. That's the problem. You have good facts, but you do not have decency. So learn it. Put him down. Supriya Shinet, Supriya Shinet, you use the example of bonds. Bonds went to all parties. So it's not as if you didn't get the benefits of electoral bond. The BJP is the largest party in the country. They've got more than 50% of it. That alone does not mean it's not a level playing field, right? I want concrete example from you. When you all go to the election commission today and say there's no level playing field in this country, what are you going to do about it is the next question then. I will tell you a very small thing, Rajdeep. Of course, we got money through bonds. But we are not the ones in government. We are not the ones running uh, agencies like the EDCBI or income tax. So we are not the ones at the back of corporates who in turn are giving us bonds after the raids happen. You look at the details that have emerged. I mean, we are not the ones who are letting these agencies run riot. We are not the ones who are awarding contracts by the galore as far as the central government is concerned. So, yes, there is a quid pro quo that I am going to call out. And if, if uh, and your own data, your own intelligence unit data puts out 584 crore given by Mega on a certain date to BJP. And the very next contract to Mega goes from the central government. So these things will be called out. But Rajdeep, I have this to say, and I will say this with all honesty, and I agree with you. I don't think anybody should be in a shouting match here, and least of all, call names. I think it's indecent. You look at how the BJP uses resources. You look at how they use a thing like social media, something that I work on very closely. This morning, the Bharatiya Janta Party's official handle put out a snipped, snapped video, a, a clip where Mr. Kharge is having water, any decent man when he has water, always asks people next to him, do they want water? He asked Mrs. Gandhi on stage, she refused. He asked Mr. Gandhi on stage, he refused. There have been multiple clips where Mr. Gandhi has opened the bottle, poured water for Mr. Kharge by the virtue of him being older. The BJP's official handle, where the buck stops with the BJP president, Mr. Nadda, puts out a clip and says, because he's Dalit, the water was not accepted. How do you think this is a level playing field? We will report about this to the election commission. We will write to the BJP. We will write to Twitter. Have Twitter you never, have you never, have you, can you cross Facebook your heart, Ms. Srinath? Ms. Srinath, Ms. Srinath, just a minute. Can you cross your heart and say you've never edited a clip of Prime Minister Modi? 
I can cross my heart on national television and tell you, I have never been called out for fake news. I have never edited a clip. I have never ever manipulated the prime minister's speech. I cross my head and on my heart and say, as the head of Congress's social media and digital platforms, I've never ever okay. done that. I have never used fake news. The BJP weaponizes fake news. It demeans people. It assassinates reputations. That is what misuse of resources is. And the reality is that agencies and institutions that must act to protect democracy look the other way. I am saying this with all honesty. I was there at the election commission with a series of complaints yesterday. I want to see what action will be taken by the commission. Because okay. the commission, the agencies, the institutions are also... you made your point. You made your point. I've listened, I've listened to you patiently. Mr. Punawala deserves the same patience because he will otherwise say that he hasn't got the time. If he still has, I know Amitav, I'll come to you. But Mr. Punawala, this time, do you want to respond to the latest charge that social media is being weaponized just as the ED is being weaponized? Clips are being used simply to target the opposition and the EC is standing by. That's the charge which was just made by Supriya Shrinet. She cited a specific instance this morning involving Malik Arjun Kharge. Your response, Mr. Punawala? Only if you don't interrupt me. Here is a party which brought in 66A when it was in power, and now you will come up with some other point to rebut me. They brought in 66A to silence social media. They put journalists like Shivarur on the list and got his account banned, and they put him on a list. He's your colleague, at least have some sympathy for him. Is talking and telling us about how level playing field is not there. The party which imposed emergency, the party which allowed one MP to become a judge one day and then the MP the other day, namely Barul Islam, is lecturing us on a social media post. By the way, who lied about Prime Minister Modi saying Chokidar Chore has been said by the Supreme Court and then apologized subsequently? It was Rahul Gandhi. The problem is only this, Rajdeep. Rajdeep, I wish tonight only one question that needed to be asked. Ravneet Bittu today came out and he's a MP. He's not a person who's got 5% votes in Maharaj Ganj. He got, he got elected to parliament, a feature mm -hmm. that many congressmen don't get. Now, he said that there is no vendetta and that it was good action because Mr. Kejriwal is a thug. If you would have asked that question to Supriya, that is Supriya representing the party line or Ravneet Bittu, perhaps the debate would have had a level playing field. Okay, if fair enough. That's Ms. a good question. Good Sattar, question. That Mr. Manish Sisodia is in jail on P POCA and on IPC, it would have been a level playing debate. And it would have been a level playing debate, Rajdeep, if you had one panelist from my side and one panelist from the other side and didn't interrupt me a hundred times and didn't put me off and cut me off and allowed Supriya Shinet to say whatever she wanted without interruption, it would have been a level playing okay. But Rajdeep, I don't expect it from you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Punawala. I, I'm, I'm glad you made that sharp dig at me. That's your right completely. Uh, Amitabh Tiwari, you're hearing these panelists. Do you believe in some way that there is a sense that this Lok Sabha election is with the opposition seemingly in disarray? The point that you made that even if it wasn't a even if it was a level playing field, the opposition seems at the moment well behind the BJP. Should the BJP at all even need to resort to all these? Does it really need the ED? Does it need this money power, this media power? They'll still win. Mr. Modi, Aiga to Modi hi, says the BJP. Then why do you need to lock up a Kejriwal? Why do you need to lock up a Hemant Surin before the elections? See what happens, uh, Rajdeep Ji, sometimes when you are in power, like it has happened with earlier prime ministers as well, including Indira Gandhi. What happens is that you tend to get overconfident and you tend to ignore the warning signals and you tend to believe that whatever you do uh, will not have any impact because the opposition is, is fairly in, in disarray. Today also, if you see, after the uh, arrest of Arvind Kejriwal, what we are seeing is a lot of media bites and a social media activity from the opposition. Whereas the opposition parties have not yet hit the ground. I was on, a, on a, another debate and a journalist, esteemed journalist, was there in Amritsar and said that there is not much protest on the streets, even in states like Punjab, where which, which used to be the or other which are the considered as the strongholds of uh, Aam Aadmi Party. So the opposition needs to hit the street if they have an issue and if they believe that this is an issue, they would need to hit the street and make it an issue because. But can, just I, by... can I just stop you on that because Supriya she need to take off from what Shahzad Punawala, what Amitabh Tiwari also just said. When you want to hit the street, will you hit the streets in Punjab? 
with the Amadbi party or there as Mr. Punawala, and that's a strong point. Your own leaders in Punjab are the ones who are calling Mr. Kejriwala thug. So you will hit the streets in Delhi with Kejriwal, but not in Punjab. That's the problem. The opposition then ends up looking a little bit uh, disoriented and disjointed, ma'am. A quick response. I am very glad you have asked me a question. This is an ad that we wanted to print in the newspapers today. An ad for which we were willing to pay. This is an ad that most newspapers in India refuse to carry. Where's my, I have where's my answer? Mails from them where they have where's said, my answer, ma'am? We cannot carry this because this is controversial. One second, Rajdeep. I will, I will answer your direct question. I never run away from direct questions. Major newspapers in this country today are not willing to take opposition ads. That's the state of fear. That's the dislevel playing field that we are talking about. As far as your direct question is concerned, we stand in principle with Mr. Kejriwal. There is absolutely no doubt about it. But there is a local leadership in Punjab and we are a democratic party. We don't run by the whims and fancies of one man like the BJP does. If that state unit wants to voice its concerns, it is free to. Okay, However, so you'll have a different, at, okay. at a larger level, looking at the larger picture and the bigger goal, we are obviously united as far as saving democracy in this country. Okay, let me leave it there. Up to a let me leave it there, Ms. Srinath. Your 30 seconds are up. What is very clear is that we've got into an election season. On the eve of it, two chief ministers, first in Jharkhand, now in Delhi, have been arrested by the ED. The opposition says that this is an assault on democratic rights. The BJP and it has so far claimed that all that they are doing is the law is following, the law is following its course. The question, therefore, is in all of this, do we really have a level playing field in 2024? It's for you, the viewers, eventually the voters of this country to decide on that question. I appreciate, though, my guests who joined me through this rather stormy session of the political rumble. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.